So when we talk about sex, sleep, intimacy, attraction, I remember your book also mentioned, right? Not mm -hmm. only this emotional attachment we talk about, but also physical attraction and yes. uh, even sexual function could all be impacted by sleep. That was so cool. Like you, you sort out a lot of research in this book. Yes, I thought that was so important to cover because there's really some fascinating uh, research on sleep and sex. What's, it, what's interesting is kind of anecdotally, what we hear more about is uh, this idea that, you know, sex is good for sleep. You know, you know, many people think of sex as a soporific, that is something that induces sleep. And the reality is that may be true for some, but not for all. And there really actually just isn't a great deal of, you know, good scientific evidence um, demonstrating that to be true, that sex is good for sleep. But what we do know quite conclusively from research is that sleep is good for sex. As you mentioned, um, studies have shown that um, sleep can directly impact um, sexual and reproductive hormones, including testosterone in men. One study, which was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, for instance, you know, the preeminent medical journal, found that after sleeping for about a week of you know four or five hours um, of sleep per night, healthy young men showed about a 10% reduction in testosterone levels, this critical sexual hormone. Now to put that into perspective, that's the equivalent of aging a man hormonally by 10 years. So a 45 year old man hormonally starts to look more like a 55 year old man. Um, so this is like a pretty whopping impact. But on the flip side, the positive side, which I also like to encourage people to remember, is another study in women found that for each extra hour of sleep a woman got, that increased her desire for intimacy and sex by about 14%. So sleep is quite powerful and has a direct impact on our sex hormones, um, on sort of the hormones related to bonding and affection and on sexual frequency, desire, and pleasure. So prioritizing sleep has many benefits, including potentially enhancing our sex lives. Yeah, wow, that's so important. I think you totally shift how we view it, right? I definitely hear a lot of people all like to do masturbation or sex to help feel tired, feel sleepy. But rarely we talk about the other way around. Yes, and I'm sure, you know, as a sex therapist, one of the most common uh, sort of reasons for low sexual frequency is the, you know, I'm too tired for sex, honey, complaint, right? So there is an antidote, antidote to that. Get more sleep and you might actually see less of that I'm too tired for sex, honey, um, comment. And moreover, both partners may be more likely to enjoy the sexual activity because when you're well slept, you know, your mood is better, you know, physically. You can be more in tune with your partner and the desire is greater. So there's lots of benefits to prioritizing sleep in the context of your relationship. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And also when we talk about therapy, when we talk about treatment, I feel like there's a lot of things are similar between uh, sleep treatment and sex treatment. And there's, for example, in sleep treatment, when people have insomnia, they cannot sleep well. And we have this technique called sleep restriction, right? We're mm -hmm. like, oh, you already have insomnia. You come in and sleep more, but we tell you, you have to sleep less temporarily in order to <laughs> sleep better. In sex, there's something similar too. When people have like a sexual pain, you know, or not so good sex, sometimes we tell them, hold on the intercourse for ah. several months. And really start exploring each other's body and, uh, you know, build this intimacy and the emotional <clears throat> attachment you mentioned, or maybe including sleep better, right? And hold off the, the big you think what sex is. That yes. <laughs> That's so interesting. So you're, you know, enhancing your sex drive by restricting from sex and just sort of exploring everything. But sim similarly, as you said, in an insomnia treatment, we actually restrict the thing that is sleep that the person is so actively craving in order for the natural drive for sleep 
to increase. That's that's really fascinating. And I'm glad you mentioned the sleep treatment thing because this is actually another important area that we as a field in sleep science and medicine have neglected. Our sleep treatments are entirely focused for the most part on the individual. And whether we like it or not, partners are along for the ride. And, you know, I've really advocated for, and now I'm developing sleep treatments that actively incorporate the partner. Because we know from research that when even when partners aren't actively included, you know, they insert themselves in the treatment. And sometimes the most well-intentioned partner actually does the exact wrong thing when it comes to supporting the treatment. So as you know, like an insomnia treatment, one of the things we do early on is restrict sleep. Now, a partner who doesn't know the context of the treatment will in a very supportive and well-meaning way often say, oh, honey, why are you, you know, working so hard at this? Sleep in, I'll take the kids in the morning. Or once you go to bed early, you look really tired. And that, you know, for somebody who doesn't understand the treatment seems like a really supportive thing to do. Unfortunately, it's exactly counterproductive in the context of effective insomnia treatment. So we really do need to do a better job as sleep clinicians, as well as sex therapists to incorporate the partner into the context of treatment because um, they really can make a big difference. Mm. I think you raise a really important <clears throat> new concept in this field. 